I'm going to start off uh, talking a little bit about 23andMe or a, a story about it, as uh, Stuart mentioned. Uh, this is from a DNA sample or spit party that 23andMe held a couple years ago with uh, Barry Diller and uh, the founder of uh, 23andMe and other uh, media moguls. And uh, during an interview, um, Ann Wojcicki, the found co-founder of 23andMe, uh, made a statement to uh, Amy Harmon, who reported this in the New York Times, that uh, using the social networking uh, opportunities on 23andMe where people can come together uh, based on their genotypes, as Stuart mentioned, uh, that uh, that's what they're going to do and these artificial barriers of country and race will start to break down. I think she's expressing uh, a, a sentiment that uh, is pretty common, the idea that biotechnology is somehow going to overcome race and other unjust polit political divisions, uh, either because technologies will bring people together based on other grounds like their genotypes, or because human beings will perfect themselves uh, in a way that makes race uh, and gender unimportant. Uh, George Annis mentioned that in his talk. Or that we will all be uh, joined together, as I just mentioned, in a war against the machine, and human beings will forget about their divisions. I once uh, talked about race and biotechnology at a conference where uh, someone pulled me aside and said, well, that's so passe. Uh, we should be thinking far ahead. Why are you talking about race? In 50 years, race won't be important anymore. We'll be fighting other things. I said, what will we be fighting? He said, we'll be fighting the machines. <laughs> so, and he was serious. Uh, so this idea um, seems pretty, pretty common. Now, uh, and of course, there was a prediction that the Human Genome Project showing that race was not a genetically based division, not natural, not written in our genes would uh, lead to us transcending race, but uh, without skipping a beat, race became the center of inquiry. Uh, as Nicholas Wade reported uh, just you know, a year later that, uh, okay, we've done the Human Genome Project, now we have to move on you know, to what's really important, the genetic differences between human races, and of course, uh, using human races, as he always does, as if it is a natural biological category. And that's what uh, scientists need to confront. And so we've seen that uh, despite the predictions that biotechnology is going to overcome race or that we now know, based on the Human Genome Project, that race isn't a natural division, uh, we've seen the expansion of race-based genomic and biomedical research and technologies on a number of fronts, race being used as a category in biomedical and population genomics research, uh, the development of race-specific pharmaceuticals being uh, the idea uh, promoted as the first step toward personalized medicine, um, race as a proxy for genetic difference that will aid in the development of personalized medicine, uh, race uh, used in every single aspect of reproduction assisting technology so that uh, sperm and eggs are divided by race. Uh, the catalogs, you know, have, make it easy to uh, divide up sperm and egg donors by race. They're uh, marketed by race, solicited by race. Race is used in pre-implantation genetic diagnosis to test the embryos. Uh, genetic ancestry testing companies that claim to be able to tell you what race you are, what percentages of pure races you are, and uh, the collection of DNA biobanks by the government and private companies that uh, in various ways um, put race at the center. And so uh, even though uh, there is this hope that biotechnology is going to overcome race. I think what we're seeing now is that race is 
being emphasized at the molecular level at the very time that people are saying race doesn't matter anymore at the social level. Uh, both conservatives who have long held to a colorblind philosophy that uh, we live in an equal society and so if people of different races fare differently it's because uh, something's wrong with the ones that don't fare well. It's just the operation of the market and uh, those who uh, fall behind, something must be wrong with them. Uh, their culture, but perhaps their genes. Uh, and now with the election of Barack Obama, uh, even liberals are saying we're in a post-racial society, as if his election somehow erased all the inequities of race that continue to exist in America. And even though I'm focusing on race, I also want to emphasize that we, I think this applies to other uh, social hierarchies in our country as well, based on wealth, based on gender. Uh, the, that the hope that biotechnology would overcome them is challenged by the reality that these inequities are at the center of the research and technologies that are being developed today. And so uh, I would argue that uh, this development of a notion of race as a biological category that is supported by cutting edge research and technology is serving as a mechanism for obscuring racism and the consequences of neoliberal privatization and punishment, by which I mean the stripping of especially poor communities of color, of a social safety net, uh, applies broadly, but those are the communities that are more, most hurt by the uh, transfer of social services from the state to the market to private families, other kinds of private mechanisms that's happening at the exact same time that we're seeing an extremely brutal form of state intervention in those communities uh, in the form of mass incarceration at levels that we've never seen in the history of Western democracy uh, and with more blacks in prison today than were slaves uh, at the end of the Civil War, and uh, black men eight times more likely than white men to be in prison. Uh, also, uh, the foster care population skyrocketing, made up mostly of children of color in this country. Uh, welfare turned into a system of behavior modification. So all of these uh, extremely uh, brutal forms of state intervention uh, are obscured by uh, the notion that um, we will find liberation in our genes and overcome race through uh, some uh, through technology and uh, uh, a kind of genetic uh, community that doesn't pay attention to race. Okay, I have to move quickly now. Uh, some examples are uh, the colorblind social policy that a majority of justices on the United States Supreme Court uh, hold, uh, and some um, conservative commentators like Sally Saitel at the American Enterprise Institute who explicitly make this distinction between social race that doesn't matter and biological race that makes a difference in everything. Um, so that genetic race is seen as scientific truth and social race as ideology. This is uh, commonly expressed by scientists who are engaged in this research as well, that we're just doing uh, what's scientifically true and your objections about social justice and racism are just pure politically correct ideology. Uh, liberals though also often say, uh, have a position that's strikingly similar, almost to the word, as, as conservatives, uh, based on a belief in American liberal democracy uh, overcoming the harms that might uh, come from the use of race uh, and other kinds of social uh, divisions in their work. Uh, like Nicholas Rose's statement that uh, because we're, we live in an advanced liberal democracy, uh, what's going on is not the same as eugenics. Uh, because it involves choice, enterprise, self-actualization, uh, the, the ability to control our lives at the genetic level without seeing the ways in which social inequities are shaping these very technologies and the ways in which 
uh, we are uh, expected to use them. Uh, it's not always a choice. So there's a growing expectation um, to use them. Uh, African Americans also, uh, some saying, yeah, there's this problem, but we can't afford to pay attention to it, the biological definition of race. We have to move forward with the technologies to aid in health disparities. And I just want to um, close by pointing out that at the same time that uh, we can see a kind of common voice among conservatives and some liberals, uh, supporting the, the faith that science is going to, on its own, and biotechnology on its own, overcome social inequities. Uh, there are also new alliances coming together of people who see the need to, uh, to deliberately and explicitly uh, fight against the use of uh, unjust hierarchies in uh, the development of biotechnology. Thank you.